question goes to all the panelists. Um, we are into industrial revolution right now. And uh, of course, in the future, it will affect all the business industry. Uh, how, we, how, we, how are we prepared for this? Because uh, all of us will be affected, especially not us right now, but also our children and grandchildren, especially our grand great grandchildren. Essentially, if you're asking as far as what are the specific approaches to improving or harnessing our preparations, there are really three things, at least as far as I'm concerned, and the team that prepared the scoping study. First is the regulatory, regulate, the regulatory environment. We need to start um, improving, you know, trying to ensure that firms are supported to innovate and do business easily. And aside from that, to tie with regulatory, the regulatory environment and institutions is to make sure that uh, we're, we're properly supporting innovation. Second is regarding human capital development, which is probably the basic framework, because as we were saying that some people are at risk of, of um, job displacement. They may not necessarily change, uh, lose their jobs, but they may, they may not, we don't know. So it's better to have, for, for them to have future skills. Third is social protection. For those who will, who will probably be left behind because whether by choice or because of their own capacities, which are very, very difficult to handle, uh, then we may need to provide, we need to, government particularly, we need to be there to, to give that social protection. Uh, I think, ma'am, um, we can't really avoid being affected by it because we're already affected by it. And also, we can't completely prepare for it because it's something that we don't really know. It's an animal that has not been born yet. Or, you know, it's, it's taking shape. Pa, so we can't completely prepare for it. But as to what we can do, um, the emphasis is really on in education, uh, making sure that people have the foundational skills to take part in all of these things. Just to touch on agriculture, for example, um, in Tanzania, in Africa, there was a group of fertilizer companies that gave fertilizers to farmers. And they were like, oh, okay, dapat tataas na yung productivity after we give you the fertilizers. Huh? But then when they came back, I, I think like six after one planting season, mas bumaba patuloy yung yield ng farmers and they were asking why and it's because the farmers could not read the instructions in the fertilizer parang dapat pala it has to be diluted in water and i mean all of these things and the, the foundational skills aren't there so even if the technology is if they can't understand what it means then you really can't maximize the opportunities so educate in educating foundational values Second is technical competence. Um, it's important to be able to do your job well. Because um, even though there are great productivity gains from technology like robots and, and uh, artificial intelligence, I think that people are still irreplaceable because we know, I mean, we can relate as human beings. Eh? And being technically competent is, is important for us to have the confidence to say to our employers, hey, it, this robot might be faster than me, but that robot can't really you know, distinguish be between good service and bad service. Maybe, maybe not yet. 
yung mga ganyan, right? So, you need to have the technical competence to also resist. And and um, and the third value, and, and, and education has a big role to play, is really all of these mga human humanities, right? Like, being um, able to care, empathy, creativity. Um, these are the things that need to be taught in, in schools and also lifelong. Kasi, um, these are the things that cannot be replaced by technology, I think. Um, because even though, I think, um, there's, there's already a computer program that can paint, diba? Um, still, it's still different and there's still that human touch. I didn't get to talk about this so much in my presentation earlier, but many um, CEOs are actually thinking about human plus machine. It's not human versus mas machine. We're actually interacting with machines, with technology on a daily basis. And we need to ask ourselves, how do we maximize these opportunities from from the human side and also from the mas machine side. And lastly, I would like, I would, I wanna say, just because technology exists does not mean that uh, people will adopt. So that 48% job function um, statistic that many of our colleagues here um, cited earlier from McKinsey, yung ma para replaced by automation, um, it's actually a, already an adjusted estimate. Kasi a higher estimate would be uh, adopt again every time there's a new technology, but technologies are expensive. These drivers, driverless cars are expensive. Um, AI to develop it is expensive. So just because the technology exists does not mean that it will be adopted and um, that, will, that it will really replace people. So I mean educate, educate, educate. Agree. I agree. Um, well, for me, uh, just two points. Um, innovation. Innovate, innovate, innovate. <laughs> Well, um, that's the reason why uh, I kept emphasizing a while ago the establishment of uh, regional inclusive innovation centers. And um, the, by, by, by that, I am not uh, referring only to the more advanced regions, but even the Bank Samoro, which uh, was uh, uh, referred to earlier by uh, Ms. Uh, Amina Rasul uh, Bernardo. Um, what, what we're doing is not only to benefit uh, urbanized areas, but we uh, would, th that's the reason why we were calling it regional IIC, by the word inclusive, that means for, for all the regions, for all the uh, different uh, areas um, in the country, we need to uh, ensure that we will be able to make them more innovative, otherwise how can, how can they uh, transform their economies? And um, also, um, for, for it's, um, to me, the, the, the case of Israel is really um, very inspiring, very instructive, because um, Israel, um, as, we, as we know it now, it's a startup nation, very innovative. And so I was thinking, maybe given the, um, really the very harsh uh, conditions that many of the places in Mindanao are experiencing, it's actually in there, uh, in these kinds of uh, very difficult yeah, conditions where opportunities could arise, where people could become more creative. They know the problems and there would be solutions. And um, it's really very important for us in the government to provide all the support that we can give in order to create this um, enabling environment that would allow uh, the execution, the commercialization of all the ideas uh, that would uh, come out from uh, these places. And it's through this uh, regional IICs that we want to achieve that. And then the second point, um, I think it's also related to what Love has already mentioned. Um, not, not all of the companies uh, would shift to AI uh, uh, tomorrow or immediately. There's going to be a transition and not all of them will be able to really quickly automate because it would still depend on the scale or the level of activities that they have. Because once you do your uh, feasibility study, uh, whether it would be uh, more advantageous, more profitable for you to acquire a machine than to uh, maintain your, uh, your workforce, um, if, your, if, if the scale of your work is still um, uh, very, at a very minimal level, it might not be that profitable. And of course, it would also depend on the kind of industry, on the kind of activities uh, that you are doing, because there's a technology that is 3D printing, which would allow you really to uh, custom, customize 
Um, so meaning you can produce at a small scale, um, but, but technology really changes so fast. And I think in the future, uh, 3D printing would also allow you to um, do commercial commercial scale. Um, but at the same time, it's also um, important that uh, um, the, 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 I think I also emphasized it uh, earlier, the balance, balance, being able to balance for government, for its policy uh, directions, for its uh, programs um, and other policy measures to be able to balance uh, automation, between automation and uh, labor intensive activities. This is really very important. And um, of course, you, you mentioned earlier uh, working together with uh, robots. So we don't really have to compete with them. They are cobots. So you improve the productivity of the person, of your worker, by maybe uh, acquiring uh, robots that would uh, improve uh, their productivity. So they can work side by, people can work side by side with robots. And I've seen um, certain factories doing that. And it, yeah, uh, they, they it, it really, technology is so, so amazing. But uh, again, to me, it's really creative destruction. It's not, uh, it's not as if the world would end for developing countries uh, like us. Um, because if you if you look back in the past uh, uh, with the invention of electricity uh, or with the invention of uh, steam engine, uh, the, the displacements uh, happened. But uh, we were people, humanity, we were able to manage all this. And I'm sure with the fourth industrial uh, revolution, it would be the same. Siguro, I, I just wanted to emphasize the role of media. No? Stakeholders, in general, will have to work together. Pero kayo ang talagang window to the public. Eh. So you need, to be, you need to be there to explain to people, hey, there are lots of opportunities for us to improve in the next few years. But there will also be risks. So that's why, it, you know, preparation, you know, will be entailing. You, you, we can't know for sure what's going to happen in the future, but we have to start shaping up today. I mean, we are, we're already doing a little bit of that work now, but we need to re-examine the landscape. And I really hope you in the media will help us explain this more to the public, because you are our window to the public. Uh, your uh, 